and to all of you who have joined us for worship with the First Baptist Church of Ahoski this morning. Uh, we are glad you have chosen to join us <clears throat> in worship today. Our pastor, Trey Gillum, is away today. He and his wife, Luann, are taking their daughter, Maddie Grace, to college and getting her settled into her dorm at Randolph-Macon College. So please be in prayer for them as they make that drive, as they get her settled in, as they say their uh, goodbyes. Um, she is their only child, so it's kind of an empty nest thing there. So be in prayer for Maddie Grace as she begins her studies and for Trey and Luann as they support her in her college years. We do invite you to continue to pray for Bill Arrington, who is undergoing treatments for cancer. We hope you are already praying for and will continue to pray for anyone involved in the education systems in our community, in our state. Uh, the virus is making uh, the beginning of the school year from preschool all the way through college difficult. So please keep the administrators, the teachers, the students, and their families in your prayer that we might support them as they try to do school the best they can. I also want to share with you what we hope is some good news. Our sanctuary renovation is going right along on schedule. And we believe, um, should everything line up correctly, we may be able to, to return to some form of in-person worship sometime um, in mid-September, maybe late September, early October. Of course, that will, um, that will require some parameters that we have to uh, work around or work with in order to gather for worship. But we hope that is good news, that we get to assemble back in our more beautiful sanctuary sometime this fall. For worship today, as uh, I sometimes do when I preach, uh, we've changed things up just a bit. Uh, today, we're going to talk about what it means to be in solidarity with the psalmist. Together, through the psalms, we're going to explore the feelings of joy as we praise God, our feelings of lamentation as we express our sadness, our feelings of anger, yes, our anger, and our thanksgiving to God who walks with us through all of these feelings. So we pray that what we do in worship today will be meaningful for your journey with Christ. Welcome to worship. What feelings do you bring with you to worship today? Are you filled with joy or sadness? Are you anxious or peaceful? Are you angry or filled with gladness? Most likely we're all experiencing a mixture of all those feelings. So as we gather to worship, you're invited to bring all those feelings with you purposely Bring those feelings with you and lay them at the feet of Jesus. And then may we all trust that God will accept them. Amen.
join me in our call to worship. Come, let's praise God together. For God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's tell a story of God's power and majesty, of his mighty acts throughout history. For God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's remember the compassion he has shown toward us. Let's remember the mercy and unfailing love he has given to generation after generation. For God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's worship God together. For God is great and worthy of our praise.
Children, it is a poster day today. Let's see, Henry, how they are able to see these. I have some pictures of some children, and I'm going to let Mr. Andy and Miss Jamie help me with this too. Yeah, you'll be staying where you are. But I want you to respond. You can continue with the children and respond. But children, I want you to respond at home too. Um, tell me what emotion you see in these pictures, okay? What do you see? Smiling. Happiness. Happiness, yes. This girl looks like she's having a good day, doesn't she? Okay. Let's try this one. What emotion do you see here? Mm, anger. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Jamie said, err. <laughs> yes. He's, not, he's, he's pretty angry, isn't he? You can see it on his face. Good gracious. All right. What about this one? What emotion do you see? Sad. Sad. Concern. He's sad. Poor thing. He's sad. All right. And what emotion do you see here? Love. 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 Joy. Sweetness. All those things you see. And these are only a few of the emotions that we humans can feel. Um, we have so many of them. But now I have a question to ask you about each one of them. Do you think God would like to hear a prayer from this girl? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you think God would like to hear a prayer from this boy? Yes. yes. You sure? Yes. Yes. Do you think God would like to hear a prayer from this boy? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And do you think God would like to hear a prayer from these two girls? Yes. God wants all of us. Every feeling we have, even the feeling that that boy had in that really angry picture, God wants us to share all of us with him. And the way we do that, one of the ways we do that is to pray. So when you're angry, pray. When you're happy, pray. When you feel so loving, pray. When you're sad, pray. God wants to hear, hear all of those prayers, all of those feelings given to him so that he might could help us in them. People of God, what is our prayer for all our dear children? Our prayer is that they would grow up to be like Jesus, strong and brave, full of grace and truth, and that we will help them. Amen. Psalm 69, verses 1 through 3 and 13 through 16. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters and the floods engulf, engulf me. I am worn out calling for help my throat is parched, my eyes fail, looking for my God. But I pray to you, Lord, in the time of your favor, in your great love, O oh God, answer me with your, your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me, from the dead water. Do not let the flood waters engulf me or depths swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, Lord, out of the goodness of your love in your great mercy, turn to me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Fred had been a middle school teacher for 26 years. Through his strong Christian faith, he felt led to the teaching profession and felt like God had given him the talents needed to succeed in that field. And even though the challenges of the profession had increased enormously over those 26 years, Fred's love of teaching remained constant. But in March 2020, that constancy was challenged. A highly contagious, previously unknown virus had rapidly spread to the United States. People Fred knew had contracted the virus. The resulting pandemic led school officials to determine that the best course of action was to transition from an in-person educational setting to an online one. And Fred wondered, how in the world are we going to make this work? A few weeks later, Fred was trying to settle into a new rhythm as he and his students struggled with having to adapt to a virtual classroom. Just teaching the regular curriculum was difficult enough. But added to that, some of Fred's students had little or no support at home. Others had always counted on the school to provide a healthy breakfast and lunch. Therefore, their food insecurities were causing them to not be able to pay attention. And a few of his students lived in areas with either poor internet service or none at all. At the end of a particularly challenging day, Fred called his pastor and asked if she would pray for him. Reverend Burton said, yes, of course I'll pray for you. But before she did, she spent some time listening Fred. Then, after Fred had tearfully shared his anguish, she spoke. I can only imagine how difficult it must be for you and your colleagues to teach under these most unusual circumstances. I can hear the stress in your voice. I can, I can see that you are terribly stressed. So now, Fred, let me ask you this. What are you doing to take care of yourself? Well, he answered after a long sigh, I'm exercising when I can. And I'm eating fairly healthy meals. And I try to carve out some time for Bible study and prayer. But truth? My heart's not in it. I'm just feeling so helpless, so anxiety-ridden, so very sad. Your feelings are understandable considering your circumstances, Reverend Burton offered. You feel what you feel. Now let's talk about what you can do with those feelings. Reverend Burton continued by saying, whenever I'm feeling similar to the way you have described, I found the book of Psalms to be helpful. I turn to one of the many Psalms of lamentation, and as I read, the psalmist's words give voice to my feelings. I'm comforted knowing that long ago, long before Christ was born, there were others who felt the way I do, others who wrote about those feelings. And those writings are in our holy scriptures. Sometimes I even write my own song of lamentation. Putting pen to paper, I pour out my feelings of sadness, letting them rest at the feet of Jesus. I don't think God wants to hear my complaining, replied Fred. Oh, but he does, she said. God invites us to bring our troubles to him. Remember these words of Jesus? He says to us, come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. After a few minutes of silence, Fred said, will you send me a list of the Lamentation Psalms that speak to you? 
Of course I will, replied Reverend Burton. And would you be willing to let me read one of your own songs of lamentation? Fred added. Yes, I'll send one of those too. Now, let me pray for you. Folks like Fred, you, me, all of us, never expected the year 2020 to unfold as it has. It was supposed to be the year that lives up to the symbolism in its numbers. 2020, perfect vision. Instead, our political landscape remains tremendously nearsighted. Our economy has cataracts. And this virus, this virus is so farsighted, no one on the planet has learned how to control it. Eight months into 2020, we are tired. And we are distraught. And because of all that has had to be shut down or canceled or postponed, because of all that's been lost, the resulting sadness and disappointment is often overwhelming. So, what do we do with those feelings? What can we do with those feelings? We can turn to God. We can turn to God and pour out our sadness. Share with Him our disappointment. And like the psalmist, we can pray something like this. Save us, O oh God, for this virus has caused too many deaths, has infected too many people, and is affecting every aspect of our lives. We are paralyzed by it and can't find a safe way through it or around it. We are weary and the strain is too much. At an acceptable time, O oh God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer us. Do not let our economy collapse. Do not let our politics continue to spawn division. And please, God, do not let the virus continue to rage. Answer us, O oh Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to us. Amen. Psalm chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. 
How long, O oh Lord, will you forgive me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O oh Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Rebecca. Rebecca was angry. She was angry at her school. She was angry with her parents. She was angry, yes, with God. Her senior year of high school was not supposed to be this way. She was supposed to cheer for her last game, dance at her last prom, participate in her last award ceremony, and graduate with her fellow classmates sitting side by side on the football field. But none of that happened. Her cheerleading uniform had been turned in. Her prom dress hung unworn in a closet. Her awards had been mailed to her home. She completed her academic requirements through online classes and graduation, well, at least graduation was salvaged a bit thanks to a clever principal and staff who came up with a drive-in version. But Rebecca was still mad and she just couldn't get rid of the mad. When midsummer rolled around, and Rebecca began getting ready for college dorm life. One evening, her dad found her in her bedroom, sitting cross-legged on the floor, staring down at a tear-stained letter. Rebecca, he said, as he sat down in front of her, talk to me. She looked up at him with tear-filled, defiant eyes. And holding her college acceptance letter in her hand, she shook it at him and she said, what if this virus robs me of my freshman year of college? What if I end up spending my whole freshman year living at home and taking classes online? I hate this virus. The way it has affected everything just makes me so mad. Rebecca's father wisely let a bit of silence settle in the room before he spoke. Rebecca, he said, you have every to be angry. This virus robbed you of the senior year you were supposed to have, and yes, it may rob you of the freshman year you hope to have. And it's okay to be angry about all of it. But I'm so tired of being angry, Rebecca said. It feels like I have been angry forever. I know, sweetheart, her dad said. You feel what you feel. Now let's talk about what you might do with those feelings. Now until that moment, Rebecca hadn't noticed that her father had brought his Bible with him into the room. She watched as he reached up and picked it up off her bed. Rebecca, he said, do you remember when you, your mom and I made the commitment to read through the book of Psalms for Lent last year? Yes, I remember, Rebecca replied. Her dad continued, and do you remember how surprised you were when you discovered that in some of the Psalms, the writer expresses some pretty strong anger? Rebecca looked into her dad's eyes, and as he saw a bit of understanding shining there, she said to him, yes, I remember that. We talked about that. You said that the Psalms are an example of what it's like to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That includes our sad heart and our troubled soul. 
and our anxious mind and our feelings of weakness. You said these psalms are proof that God can handle our anger, that God wants us to share all of who we are, even our angry selves. Smiling, Rebecca's dad said, you really were listening, weren't you? Rebecca's face lit with the tiniest of smiles. Now, her dad said, here's what I suggest. Let's add one more thing to your to-do list as you're getting prepared to leave for college. He handed her a slip of paper that he pulled from his Bible. Here's a list of some of those angry songs. I suggest you read one each day. And then, using that day's psalm as your guide, write one of your own. And don't hold back, Rebecca. God wants you to share every part of who you are with him, even the angry parts. Thanks, Dad. Rebecca whispered as she embraced her dad. And then she pulled back, looked him square in the eyes, and said, Really, Dad, thank you. Perhaps you can identify with Rebecca's feelings. After eight months, eight months of social distancing, hand sanitizing, mask wearing, Zoom meetings, and virtual everything, your feelings about all the virus have caused you to move from feelings of sadness to downright anger. Your anger fuels questions like, how did this happen? Who could have stopped this but didn't? How long before a bloody vaccine becomes available? And how many people are going to die between now and then? But there are deeper questions running through your mind, and they are directed straight at God. Dare we ask them with the fierce, angry tone that reflects our feelings? Dare we ask, how long, O oh Lord, how long will this virus rage? Dare we ask, why don't you make it go away? Dare we ask, where are you in this? Yes, we dare. We dare ask these questions. And when we do, there's no punishing bolt of lightning coming down on our heads. There's no violent response because the God that we dare to talk to wants to hear everything, even our anger. We do get a response from God. It's found hundreds of times from Genesis to Revelation. And here's what God says to us. Be not afraid. I'm with you. In the midst of a pandemic, God says to us, be not afraid, I am with you. In the midst of our political division and economic strain, God says to us, be not afraid, I am with you. In the midst of every challenge we face, God's message to us remains the same. Do not be afraid, I am with you. And when we truly hear these words, when we receive them and hold them in our hearts, we are better able to cope. We are better able to continue this journey through the pandemic and the political division and the economic strain and all manner of challenges. Because God says to us again, and again, and again, be not afraid, I am with you. And we are able to embrace the remaining verses of Psalm 13, which Andy read for us earlier. Hear these words, but I trust in your unfailing love, O oh God. My heart rejoices in your salvation. 
Therefore, I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Brothers and sisters, be not afraid. God is with us. Let us sing our praises to God.
Owen knew his father's life was coming to an end. The nursing home staff had told him and his siblings so when they met virtually early in the week. They had all agreed to place their father in hospice care so that his final days would be spent as comfortable as possible. When the nursing home called to say they thought the end was near, Owen headed there with a determined intention of being with his father through the end. Because of the pandemic, Owen had not been allowed in his father's room for weeks. But under the circumstances, surely the nursing home would allow him to be with his father. And they did. As Owen sat beside his father's bed and held his unresponsive hand, a wave of gratitude washed over Owen, and a litany of thanksgiving began to play through his mind. Thank you, God, that I got to have this man as my father. I was so blessed that I got to call him dad. Thank you, God, that my children got to know him and be loved by him. And they did so while he was still in good health. Thank you, God, for all he taught them and me about you and about how to live a good and honorable life. Thank you, God, that I am able to sit with him here right now in these last moments. And then as Owen's father took his final breath, Owen prayed, Thank you, God, for welcoming my father into his heavenly home. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. After the words, Mama and Dada, the third and fourth words we use to teach our children are, thank you. Mama, Dada, thank you. And fairly early in a child's life, when, she or, when he or she has been given a gift, the parents prompt the child by asking, what do you say? And in that oh-so-adorable baby talk, the child responds, Thank you. It's not at all surprising, then, that the first prayer most children utter is a prayer of thanks. A prayer something like this. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. like that children's prayer or Owen's prayer uttered beside his father's bedside or the psalmist's prayer. Our prayers of thanksgiving often take the form of a litany, a list of thanks we offer to God. And as we mature in our faith, we come to understand that we need to express our thanks to God, our litany of thanks by naming those things for which we are thankful. We let God know that we're paying attention to his gracious gifts. And by repeatedly offering our prayers of thanksgiving, we cultivate a life of gratitude. A life of gratitude allows us to offer our thanks to God even during the most difficult moments of life like at the bedside of a dying father or in the midst of a pandemic that is affecting everything. So, church, brothers and sisters in Christ, even in the midst of this pandemic, let us give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Why? Because even in a pandemic, God's steadfast love endures forever. Amen. <laughs>
us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day that you've made. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of our health. Thank you for the gift of this church. Thank you for the gift of being able to gather to worship you and sing your praise no matter where we are. Now we come to give back to you all these wonderful gifts that have been bestowed upon us. Open each heart to give what each can, remembering that your son gave us the greatest gift of all. Bless each giver and each gift so that both may be used to spread the good news of everlasting life. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We always conclude our worship services with a time of response. 
We pray that some element of worship today has spoken to you, has touched a place in your heart, um, has, has moved you closer to God through Jesus Christ. However you wish to respond to what you have experienced in worship today, we hope you will do so as we sing together. comes from a song and we're going to share it together respons responsibly so join me for our benediction people of God lift up your eyes to the hills from where will our help come our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth God will not let your foot be moved he who keeps us will not slumber. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike us by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep our life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Thanks be to God. Amen.